Super. Thank you, Kevin, and welcome everybody. And welcome to the uh, Summer 2022 Institute called Flexibility for Equitable Learning and Teaching. And our acronym is FELT. You'll probably see a lot of FELT acronym in this um, few in these few weeks. So that'll help you identify this course. So I'm Leslie Kennedy and Emily. And I'm Emily Magruder. Uh, I direct Innovative Teaching and Future Faculty Development in the Chancellor's Office. I started in the CSU as a faculty member at Dominguez Hills in 2004, which is where I transitioned from being a frequent utilizer of faculty development programming, um, which led me into my current role supporting professional learning for inclusive and equitable instruction across the system. Leslie, do you want to say a little bit about who you are? I think most everyone knows you, but just in case. Well, um, I, I work in the chancellor's office with Emily and my area is academic technology services. I'm the assistant vice chancellor there. We cover a myriad of topics and support for you all in the system around um, uh, licenses, yeah, educational technology uh, contracts and licenses, um, library, all your library materials we purchase and we run your library systems. We also um, run the Quality Matters and Quality Learning and Teaching online courses. And the Affordable Learning Solutions is also part of our shop. And last but not least, the uh, Accessible Technology Initiative for the system as well. Turning it back over to you, Emily. Thanks, Leslie. So um, Leslie and I are really pleased to be collaborating Again, last year, we were so in awe of the faculty, the faculty developers, the instructional designers, the directors of academic technology, and myriad other non-faculty educators who embraced the opportunity to design and deliver flexible course experiences, making use of newly equipped classrooms. We have bold, curious innovators in the CSU. And this year, we're even more amazed that so many people, all of you, nearly 200 and still counting, are joining the second iteration of this institute, some in person and some flexibly. And we are pleased to have Kevin Kelly, who designed, facilitated last year's institute, and as generously made the modules available to adapt, ad adopt, and scrape for parts under a Creative Commons license. So we've seen parts and uh, whole pieces and parts of this institute being utilized on your campuses and beyond. We've shared it with the uh, um, entire in instructional technology uh, environment around the world. Once again, Kevin is at the helm, thankfully as we explore making more flexible course experiences for more students in more courses this fall and increasing equity in flexible courses as well. I taught last fall in a flexible environment at Long Beach State and it was a very, uh, very beneficial, enjoyable experience and I hope the students also uh, enjoyed it as well. It seemed to be that way from the comments I received afterwards. So. We are very eager to learn from you and with you. We have lots of experts and in various areas signed up for this course. And uh, so we all can learn from one another. Emily and I are here to support your collaboration across the system throughout this course and of course in the future. So Kevin, let's get started. That sounds great. Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Kelly. I'm a part-time lecturer at San Francisco State University. And in my day job, I work with campuses all around the country and the world um, in different ways, shapes, and forms. Um, before we get started, just some housekeeping tips. Um, the restroom is wherever you have a restroom in your location. Um, the captions, if you choose to view them for this viewing, um, you click on the little more button on the Zoom toolbar and choose show subtitle and you'll be able to see the um, captions that are being typed by our captioner Susie today. Uh, and then we encourage this uh, to be an interactive session. So please add your questions and um, and comments in the chat if you have resources to share or ideas that you want to pose. I am going to share my screen. And as 
Uh, Leslie said, we'll kick this off. So I wanted to start the session by doing a, a TLDR. If you're not familiar with that acronym, it stands for too long, didn't read. It's a way that authors sometimes summarize key points from a chapter. So we'll call it too long, didn't review. If you didn't have time to review the Institute details before you joined us this morning, we've got you covered. Basically, this 2022 Summer Institute, as Leslie mentioned, it's called Flexibility for Equitable Learning and Teaching. So we're going to explore flexibility and equity. Both of those can mean many things. And so we will probably not <clears throat> cover everything in depth. We're, this is meant to be like a buffet where you can taste different ideas and take them back to your campus where you can explore them in more depth. The other idea that you should take away from this whole institute is that we are not asking you to redesign your entire course unless you really want to do that. We recommend taking one or two strategies after being exposed to the buffet and um, diving into those as opposed to feeling yet again that you have to start from scratch and redesign your entire course over the summer. We also know that flexibility means different things to different people on different campuses. And so this chart here basically just shows that flexibility is when we combine aspects of time for our courses or aspects of space or location for our courses or both. And so some of you may be teaching co-synchronous courses where the, you have roomers and zoomers and they're all in the same time, but not in the same place. Others of you might be teaching all online, but you might have a bisynchronous course where you have some students are synchronous and some are asynchronous. Some of you might dive into what's called <clears throat> hybrid flexible courses, where you're combining online and in-person. One moment. Had a little frog in my throat, had to get it out. You might be combining online and in-person, and you might be combining asynchronous and synchronous all in the same course. Regardless of what you're doing on your campus or in your class, um, we are just going to share strategies that work in any context. This is meant to be broad in scope and reach so that you can find things that will work for you and your students. Last, the synchronous uh, aspect of this institute um, is uh, displayed here as a calendar. Um, so if you choose to kind of prepare for these live meetings by looking at what we did last year, you can review all the materials and recordings and go through those activities and then show up ready to go. Or you can come to these Zoom sessions and get inspired and then go back and see which topics you want to uh, dive into more deeply. But we are going to follow a Tuesday, Thursday schedule where um, we will, uh, starting today, explore module one. On Thursday, it'll be number two. Next Tuesday will be number three. And next Thursday will be number four. And then we'll have an open lab for questions if you wish. Again, all of these ideas are explained in more detail in the course in Canvas. And we know that some of you are still waiting to get your invitation or haven't yet um, made the leap into the Chancellor's Office Institute uh, instance of Canvas. So we, we will work with you and we have a, a colleague at the Chancellor's Office who's going to help us make sure that everybody who is not yet in the Canvas course gets to go in there. So that's the quick overview of the details of this um, institute over the next few weeks. We're going to have some fun together. And then I also wanted to take a, just a minute to support people who weren't able to review the materials from last year, module one. So I'm just going to do a quick summary, again, a TLDR version of that, so that you can um, walk away knowing what's going on here. So last year, if you joined us, uh, you this will be a review. Um, you know that we had three different modules uh, in module one, all related to course structure, 
How do we add flexibility to our course structure itself? How do we help students succeed when we have flexible courses? And how do we get ready to work in sometimes a combination of physical and virtual environments? And so those topics are front and center. They're on top of everyone's mind as they explore what a flexible course means to them and their students. So last year, we looked at just a few ideas again. Um, for example, how can you rewrite course outcomes to increase flexibility? You might be thinking about different ways to determine what students generate to show what they know. Where students do the work might be different when you have a flexible course. And when students submit their work might be different when you're trying to increase flexibility for them. We also need to outline for our students and with our students what flexibility actually means. So we can do that in the syllabus, during each class session, in our instructions for assignments, when we send out messages and announcements via email or the learning management system messaging system or some other location or modality. But we need to be communicating with our students because we can't assume that they know what flexibility means, especially as it changes from campus to campus and even from teacher to teacher. We also last year covered some aspects of how we can help students get ready. So one thing we can do is identify and anticipate students' challenges. We might ask them to complete a survey. We might give them some strategies for time and task management. We might uh, recognize that they may be balancing their participation in your class and others with other obligations like taking care of children, uh, working at a full-time job, and so on. And they may encounter technology challenges, whether they don't have reliable bandwidth for doing a lot of uh, activities in your course, or they may only have a smartphone as a device or at least um, limited access to something other than a smartphone. So thinking through our flexible courses, are we creating barriers for students to succeed um, if we don't know what challenges they're facing? We also need to start providing more support structures and strategies and doing that more often. So that might mean creating resources like tutorials or linking to tutorials that already exist, making sure the students know what their participation pathways are and giving them opportunities to practice with particular technologies or pedagogical uh, strategies so that they are successful when it comes time to do it for a score. Last but not least, helping them create connections with their peers, especially if they're in different times or different places. We still want to create a sense of community and a sense of belonging for our students. The last section that we covered last year related to the environments and how we juggle the different technologies and the different spaces. So ways that you can help yourself and your students is to simplify as much as possible, using fewer technologies if you can, using a flipped a class approach so that you can spend more time with activities rather than um, sit and listen uh, lectures. Um, or it's a combination where you might do some lecture and some activity like we'll do today. Using strategies and tools that reduce your own cognitive load are important, whether it's a startup and shutdown checklist, which you can go find in those materials from last year, or asking students for help. Those students might be paid student assistants that your campus hires to support flexible courses, or they could be volunteers in your own class. Again, we cover a lot of those strategies last year. This is just a quick and dirty summary for you all to see what we covered and help set the context for today's exploration of equity and the examples from around the Cal State system. Last but not least, um, you can use technology settings in the learning management system or the video conference tool or other technologies you use for your course to increase flexibility. And we've got ideas on how to do that as well. All right, so hopefully you feel like you're at least, you know you're in the right place, you know what happened last year, you know what's gonna happen this year. And so now let's dive into those equity concepts. I'm gonna pull back the curtain for just a second and explain what I'm about to do. I'm gonna stop the recording 
and then I'm going to start it again. Now you might ask, why would you do that? Well, our asynchronous learners, which we know some of you are watching this recording right now, um, they might prefer just to jump straight to the equity concepts and skip over the review if they saw the participated in the, the institute last year. So by stopping and starting the recording, we create small chunks for them to review rather than a long 30 minute or 90 minute video. So I'm doing that and I'm explaining it because this is a flexible course experience, right? And we wanna model the strategies that you might use with your own students. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Oh, goodness gracious. And then I'm going to start the recording.